Hey everyone, it's good to be back. <laughs> I know it's been a while, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, so much has been going on. Um, so much has been going on with the store. Um, Crystal Creek Botanicals, you guys. I've been doing a lot of work with that. Um, I don't know. It's just been a wonderful time for me. And I'm glad to be back to be able to do another video for you guys. Um, you know, um, I have to tell people something. I mean, because people can be quite rude, you know. And it's unfortunate. I mean, you're doing YouTube videos and people feel the need to, you know, leave certain comments. Um, I'm not going to just jump into the topic. So if you want to just get right into the topic, you can fast forward the video to, you know, to where you think I'm talking about the topic at hand. But I like to talk to people. I, I'm trying to build like a community and I do like to, you know, give people a, a little bit of my energy, you know what I mean? And let people know a little bit more about me. So if you're one of those people, you know, you cannot get on um, someone's YouTube channel. That's why I named this Yansa Mahala because that's me, that's my spiritual name. And so, you know, you cannot get on, on people's channels and tell them, you know, how to do stuff. You guys, it's kind of rude. So <laughs> I just had to say that, you know, off the top, I'm not just going to jump into the topic. You know, um, I might update you guys on certain things with my store. You know, I might even just update you on certain things that are going on with me, you know, so that's what we're, we're doing here, okay? And not only that, you guys, eventually we're going to be going live. So, you know, once you're going live, we're going to be able to talk to each other and interact uh, back and forth. That's why I need you guys to like, I need you to share and subscribe so I can get to the thousand subscriber mark. So I'm trying to get there so I can go, you know, live and talk to you guys and maybe we can do like tarot card readings live. So I would like to do that. I think I would like to expand uh, with the channel and do more on this channel. So you guys, um, the more subscribers I get, the more it encourages me to do more content. So I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. Um, I wanted to come back with something um, that was like some fire. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, wait a minute. If I'm going to come back after being gone from doing videos for months I'm gonna come back with something that's a really really good topic and I don't know if I'm gonna get on everything today because I have a lot that I would like to cover um, but I might do like a part one and then like a part two type of thing you guys um, you guys like the look oh my god y'all know I love peacock I know it's something that I wear a lot okay and then I have a surprise for you guys let me tell y'all something Bam! You see what I'm saying? Ah, isn't this pretty? <laughs> I love the fan. Oh my God. It just gives me a really fancy uh, voodoo queen type of thing going on. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I love the peacock fan. And, and y'all, this thing really does cool me off because the lighting and different little things in here, it will make you melt okay ladies if you know what i mean it'll make you melt okay so this i love this little fan you guys i had to get it oh my goodness it's like it's me <laughs> y'all i'm so silly but i just love and then i love green a little bit it's like a color that you know that i do like to wear um so yeah you guys so i love uh cosplay Okay, so this is my fun, my fun time doing these videos. Okay, so um, you guys, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite topics that I wanted to get on for quite some time, but it's like, uh, it's, I didn't know how I wanted to present it. So the topic is the, the return of the great mother. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because it's very relevant. And you guys know that I am very much so matriarchal. You guys know that I am very much so, you know, into spiritual systems and a divine feminine. And we're going to talk about eventually the divine masculine as well. But me being a woman, of course, this is a topic that I would more so want to touch on than the divine masculine. So <laughs> it just makes sense. And this is what I feel my calling is, you know, to help, you know, usher in this new energy. It's not something that I'm doing. It's just something that's taking place in the universe. And all we have to do is prepare for it. So it's nothing that we can do. It's just our time. 
uh, ladies, you know what I'm saying? Especially us witches, us spiritual women. And I want to give a shout out to all of my beautiful, beautiful witches. I want to say, you know, shout out to you guys. I hope you guys are manifesting. I hope things are going well. Um, I haven't had time to do tarot card readings, okay, you guys? So if you've been trying to get readings, I understand, but it's been really, really uh, busy. <laughs> so, which is a good thing, but I'm the only one doing the readings right now. So I can't wait, you know, until I get to expand and hopefully meet up with other real readers. That'll be, you know, in the future, but eventually I'll be able to catch up with you guys. Okay. So I'll be trying to email you guys back and let you guys know when it'll be a good time. So make sure you guys either call the number or email me. So I just wanted to say that about, um, you know, about the readings at crystalcreekbotanicals.com. So you guys, um, I wanted to tell you guys one thing about me um, is that I really do sometimes uh, read out of the Bible because the Bible for me is not a spiritual book. It's not a book to me that is based upon a spiritual system as it is history. Um, it has a lot of incantations in it um, that we can use for spells and different things like that. It has a lot of allegory because the Bible is based upon Babylonian culture, is also based upon Canaanite culture because the Israelites were actually ancient Canaanites, okay? And so the reason why I want to bring up the Bible is because, you know, in order for us to, to basically touch on the return of the Great Mother, we first have to find out where the hell she went, okay? And how the hell she got there. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's really important. We need to talk about the fall and how, um, you know, the great mother was taken out of her place. You see what I'm saying? And why this had to happen. And so I'm going to do something that I haven't done uh, really thus far since I started doing uh, YouTube videos on this channel. I have never really went into the Bible. Okay, one thing about me you guys need to know is that I'm very well versed in the Bible. Not only was I a Christian for a large portion of my life growing up, um, my father was a minister and I would always ask questions about the Bible. As a matter of fact, okay, it is a known fact, my mother would tell you that my first baby word was Bible. So I think it's a reason why. It's a lot of information that's in there and it's a lot of things that are coded in the Bible. And you can look at it, the Bible, from one of two ways. You can make it a, a religious thing and, and let it put you in a box or you can look at it as a higher information, okay? You can think really outside of the box with the Bible and you can see it for what it, you know, for what it really is. So um, one thing that I, I also was, was a Hebrew Israelite for a large uh, number of years, probably maybe like five years of my life. One th but one thing about me is many people in the Hebrew Israelite community uh, did not like me per se because I really did study the Bible for myself and I understood it for myself, not the cherry picked version that they tried to give me calling a cherry pick version precepts um, to create their own doctrine. And that's pretty much what they do. And that's what happened. You know, a lot of the, 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 um, the lessons that they taught us were basically more so to put us as women in more bondage. This is what happened, uh, ladies, when we allow men to teach us about who we are, when we allow men, you know, to not uh, reverence the feminine energy. You know, we, we end up in bondage, okay? And so that's what a lot of us have been in for a large period of years. Well, our ancestors more so and the women before us. We're starting to come out of that energy now. And that's why it's the return of the great mother. But first, we want to talk about uh, where she went. Okay, so because I was a Hebrew Israelite for a large number of years, one thing that I did learn was that the Bible was translated out of Hebrew, especially the Old Testament. So a lot of words that you would kind of consider to be, you know, one thing in the English language, it means something else, okay? Because you have to think these are Hebrew words. So one thing you have to have is a strong concordance, which is something that I always learned to use when I was reading the Bible, which gave me a lot of insight, okay? A lot of women don't know that. Some women speak Hebrew. I was trying to speak Hebrew and learn Hebrew. So, I mean, it's a good thing if you're really going to be a Bible thumper, and I love the Bible. And so one thing, uh, ladies um, and men, okay? So I'm not, this is not just for 
for the ladies. It's good for the men to learn about the divine feminine, okay? In doing so, you're going to see that it helps you out also as a man because the divine feminine is not about taking energy away from the male. It's about respecting all energies, okay? Versus patriarchy, that's not what it's built upon, okay? And we're going to look at that as well. So one thing that I wanted to do today is go through the Bible and kind of let you see for yourself. Remember, we're looking at this as a history book. And one thing about the Bible is a lot of you may not know, especially if you're reading out of the King James Version Bible, is that one of the mother goddesses, okay, her name is Esherah. She's mentioned in the Old Testament at least, I mean, maybe 40 to 60 times. And many of you would not know that because her name per se, if you're looking in the KJV, is not Esherah. It normally says the word grove, okay? And there's a reason for that. One of the reasons is they did not want her name to really be in there, but her name is kind of hidden. But if you look in the Hebrew, you will know that that is Esherah, okay? And so what I'm going to do is show you in the Bible how at one point in time, you have to understand that the Israelites, they were a polytheistic society, okay? What you call the Israelites were nothing more than ancient Canaanites, okay? That's one thing that's very important. And they had a pantheon of gods, okay? And the one that they called Yahweh or what is called Yah or the God of Israel was one of many gods, okay, that existed at one point in time. As a matter of fact, he is one of the seven, 70 gods that came from an energy, Asherah, which was the mother, and El, which was more of the masculine energy. And together, they had all these gods, and Yahweh, or Yah, was one of the many gods, but he was more of a warlike god energy, okay? So in ancient times, in that landmass, this was ancient Canaanites that dealt with many of gods, okay? And one thing that they did respect was the feminine principle, which created more so of a balance, okay? But you have to understand that there is no difference between politics and religion, especially during those times. Most people had to worship whatever the, the person was that was king or ruler at the time, whatever God they served, the people had to worship it as well. So religious laws was pretty much the same thing as everyday law. You see what I'm saying? And it's it's pretty much that, like that today, except it's more of a disguise. They make you think that you have more so of a freedom, but your politicians stay in your churches for a reason. You see what I'm saying? And in many countries, they still operate their countries under religious laws. That's why in many countries in the Middle East, women are still being stoned to death, people being stoned to death. You know, it's all these laws or whatever. And you're going to notice that all of these religious gods, they're built upon not embracing the feminine energy. So you're going to see that the Israelites themselves, they wanted to embrace the feminine side, you know, of God. They wanted to embrace... Um, that energy because it gave them peace, it gave them substance, it created balance, okay? But when a nation of people like the Israelites, they decided to break off and become their own nation of people, they had to pick a God that represented the energy that they needed to conquer lands and become their own nation of people, okay? So you can't conquer lands, okay, using the divine feminine because she creates something called balance and peace and substance, okay? she Nature is more so respected. It's not about conquering lands when the great mother is involved. You see what I'm saying? She's about protecting the land. So what ends up happening is you're going to realize eventually that people pick God according to what it is they believe anyway. So you'll pick a God that basically kind of coincides with your beliefs already. So if you want to conquer nations, you're not going to pick, you know, a goddess or a God and goddess that represents balance. You're going to pick a God that represents chaos, that represents conquering, that represents war, that represents sacrifice human sacrifice, blood, murder, rape, by any means. That's what you're going to want to deal with. <laughs> and that's what ended up happening when the Israelites picked the God Yahweh. D during a time some people call Yahwism, okay? I don't, it's a, it's a period of time called Yahwism, and you're going to see this. So we're going to go into the Bible and show you that it was a period of time where this was forced upon the Israelites. They did not want to be a patriarchal society, okay? They really were forced into it. But I want to show you 
more so that Eshera was in the Bible, okay? But she was not in the Bible under the name Eshera, okay? So we're going to look, and like I said, you guys, I'm going to look here. I don't want to use my actual Bible, but what I want to do is I want to look it up uh, on my computer. And the app that I have, it also has the Hebrew words as well. So you guys can look this up kind of on your own time. Okay, as well. So you guys, this is First Kings. Um, I wrote it down, chapter 15. And I want to start with verse 1 and go all the way down to the 13th verse. So you guys, this time, this is going to be pretty, pretty long, but I want you guys to see, because I also want to tell you guys something too, that what you fail to realize is that there was a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of ways that women had to rule uh, back then. Um, and one of the ways that women had to rule because the feminine energy was suppressed and women could not have leadership roles and there was this like takedown of the feminine energy, um, women had to rule many times through their sons. Uh, many times the wives of the king would birth their sons and teach them sons about the matriarch and teach their sons, you know, about the different gods. And they would teach them sons. Sometimes they would raise their sons to take down the father. Um, and the reason why is because, I mean, you make women resort to this type of, you know, <laughs> this type of energy because we're survivalists and we're going to survive no matter what. We're going to do what we have to do. And so because we birth these children, because we feed these children, and because while these kings are away and while you men are away, you know, whether you're in the streets, modern day, in the streets somewhere or whatever, we are raising these boys a lot of times. And this is not anything that's new. Men were always away. And, and up until boys got to a certain age, you know, they were under the care of their mothers a lot of times and had the mother's influence. OK, and so you're going to see that even within the Bible, that a lot of times the mother had influence and that's how she ruled or that's how she got, you know, favor. Case in point, you know, you guys talk about the patriarchs, right? Uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Let's talk about Rebecca. OK, let's talk about Rebecca and how she had two sons, right, that were twins. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Esau was the oldest and he was favored by his father, Isaac. OK. And he was supposed to be the next one in line to receive the blessing according to the Israelite law and tradition. But the mother who favored Jacob, okay, <laughs> the mother who favored Jacob, what did she do? She conspired with her son because she thought about what? Her own self. She thought about her own self-preservation and she thought about who she wanted to be in the hands of. She didn't want to be in the hands of uh, of, of Esau. She wanted to be in the hands of Jacob. So she tricked Isaac. She knew the weakness of her husband and she tricked Isaac and made sure that Jacob received the blessing. Okay. So she was schooling Jacob all alone. Okay. <laughs> she was schooling him all alone. Okay. So this is something that has always existed. I don't know why, you know, you know, the Bible with this or all these modern religions, and I call them modern because these are actually new gods. Eshera, El, and all these type of energies, the god or the goddesses, they existed way before there ever was a Yahweh, okay? So this is what other people elected, you know, these newer gods that were like later on, okay? And they're unbalanced, uneven, okay? It's to create a messed up system. And that's what we've been under a very, very long time, a very, very messed up patriarchal system, okay? So... One thing about it is that this has always been happening. And the Bible, one thing that is really good is that it gives you kind of um, a lot of information. It gives you a lot of um, kind of show you how there was kind of a matriarchal system. These women were called queen mothers. And many times these men were getting killed, you know, that were kings. 
and their sons were able to rule at the age of eight years old, you know, as young as eight, 12, you know, all of these ages. So who do you think is influencing? Who do you think is really ruling? You know, if the boy is eight years old, you know, there's no life experiences with an eight year old. Really, the boy is is said to be the one ruling, but it's the mother that's giving the influence on how the nation should be ran because the, <laughs> she's the next in line. She's the one that's teach, that's her child. You see what I'm saying? So she's a queen mother. So a lot of times, so we're going to see this when we look up uh, First Kings. Another thing I want you guys to know is whenever you're reading the Bible, you need to know that Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles is the chronological order of everything that happened with the Israelites, okay? So all of the prophecies and things that many of the prophets were, so-called prophets were talking about in the Bible, you will see many of that transpi transpire when you look at Second Chronicles because it'll give you the chronological order. Many people will want you to think that this is like future prophecy, but many of these things did happen. All you have to do is read about it either in First and Second Kings, which tell you about all the kings of Israel, and then you can read about it in First and Second Chronicles, which will tell you the chronological order of all the events that happened to the Israelites. And that's where you get a lot of your information from. But make sure you're using a strong concordance because you're missing out on a lot of history and different things like that. A lot of the history that's in the Bible is falsified. Uh, many of it is falsified because um, this is coming from a very narrow-minded perspective. You see what I'm saying? These are people that believe that there is only one God. And, you know, so these were very narrow minded kind of thoughts and ideas. And so because it's coming from more so the perspective of one group of people, they'll always like to say that they won a war sometimes when they didn't. You can go actually into the land of Israel and see that according to other documents in other nations around that time, they'll say that, you know, the Israelites did not win that war. They actually got their ass handed to them. So it's a lot, <laughs> it's kind of like people do that today. You know what I'm saying? If you had a fight, you're going to tell it a whole, whole lot different probably than the other person. <laughs> Whether you won or lost the fight, you're going to tell it a whole lot different than the other person that may have received that ass whooping. So what I'm saying is it's the same way back then. They're going to make sure that it makes it, you know, just like when you look at the landmass that they said belonged to David, it. They'll say it was this massive, huge, you know, landmass that belonged to David when in actuality, if you go into the land of Israel and look up all of the, the evidence left behind, it was a hillside. <laughs> so, you know, people... People love to exaggerate, you know what I'm saying? And so exaggerations have been going on for a very, very long time, except, you know, we didn't have cell phones and able to fake the phone and apps. Instead, you wrote about it or you exaggerated some other kind of way. So, you know, so that's what this Bible is. So you have to sometimes, you know, take some things with a, a grain of salt when you're dealing with the Bible, okay? Because it's a lot of lies in here as well, <laughs> fabricated information. Um, so... Let's get on with it and um, kind of start getting into the scriptures a little bit. We're going to start at um, at um, at First Kings, like I said, um, chapter fifteen. Let me get it back on here, you guys. Chapter fifteen, and we're going to start at verse one. Oh my goodness, looks kind of blurry a little bit. Okay. We're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to go all the way to verse 13. So you guys get a pen and paper and kind of write stuff down, um, you know, for yourself. Um, I'm not going to be video editing and putting scriptures there and doing all I'm not. I'm not going to do all that. So it's up to you. I'm kind of, you know, in a sense, old school with this. So get a pen and paper out and write this stuff down. Maybe later on down the line, I'll get more, you know, tech savvy. But right now, you know, for what it is, we just going to do it like that. Okay. So write it down. And in that way, a lot of stuff, you know, I don't want to take things out of context. I'm just going through right now, not to teach you anything on a spiritual level, but just to show you uh, our, our, our great mother and how she was removed, you know, out of society. Okay. That's what we're looking at here. Okay. It says now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, and you guys, I'm going to 
massacre these names. I hate biblical names. I hate trying to read them. You know, I ain't got time for it. <laughs> I ain't got time for it. I don't, I don't like it. Okay. So y'all could laugh and be like, that ain't, you know, but that's my least favorite part of reading the Bible. Okay. So we're going to call him Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Reigned <laughs> Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name, Micah, okay, the daughter of Absalom, okay. So it's important. You want to see there when you when you when you're looking at the second verse that they made mention of his mother, okay. When you look up the mother's name in the Strong's Concordance, it's H four six zero one, okay. And it says um, a Syrian woman, okay, or or a Micanite, okay, which is a tribe. Basically, a Micanite is a group of people. But you want to notice that they mention the mother, and and I'm and it's going to explain to you why the mother is mentioned, okay. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which had done before him, okay. And you got to think when you see something called sin, or when someone mentions uh, sin, you got to think what perspective is it coming from. You know, I did a video about what is sin because sin is, is, it's basically based upon whose perspective, okay? Because to some people, even when something is called evil, okay, some people may have to kill to survive and for their people to survive. But the people who are being killed for that to happen will look at that as being evil. But the people who are trying to survive may see it as, hey, we have to do what we have to do for our freedom, okay? So that's the example I wanna give you, you know what I'm saying? So that's subjective. So they'll call something sinful when really it's just sinful to these group of people, okay? <laughs> so I just wanna make note of that. Yeah, I'm gonna keep stopping and putting my input because you know, that's how we're doing it here. Okay, so he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not perfect with the Lord. And I want to make note also, when you see in the Bible, because I want to teach you guys some things, okay? Because all this information is things that many people don't know about the Bible. When you see all capitals in the Bible, capital L, capital O, capital R, D, it's because there's an interjection there, okay? Everywhere you see those, all those capitals there where it says, as Lord, there was an actual name there, but it was taken out of the Bible, okay? So there's a lot of things that have been taken out, moved around. That's why it cannot be called God's book because it's so imperfect. God contradiction contradicts itself several times in the Bible, and we're going to go through that. I'm going to do a whole video on biblical contradictions, narcissistic God. We're going to understand exactly really what we're dealing with when we're dealing with religious paper patriarchal gods, okay, and how it has ruined us as a people. Okay, so I just wanted to say that because when you look there, you're going to see that it says Lord, and then they'll say Jehovah, you know, but L-O-R-D in all capitals means an interjection, his God as the heart of David, his father. And it says, nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord, all capitals, his God, give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him to establish Jerusalem because David because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life which was a lie uh, because David did a lot of things that was not right uh, we can even talk about that you know um, because okay yeah, David did a lot of <laughs> things. You know what I'm saying? Lies, the lies that he's telling. <laughs> Commanded all the days of his life, save only the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. See, and you have these nations that were always fighting over the throne. You know, the younger son, the younger brother, you know, kind of like in The Lion King. You see the way it was with Mufasa and, you know, it was an issue. It always was an issue over the throne. This is with this patriarchal thing. They were always constantly killing each other and fighting each other 
for the throne. Okay. And, and women, you know, we had to do what we had to do. <laughs> now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, and, and I'm reading it slow because I'm, I'm, and all that they did are not written in the book of Chronicles. Okay. Of the kings of Judah, and there was war between Ajabam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, which means he died, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa, his son, reigned in his steed. Okay, so he died, okay? So here we get into the good stuff, okay? And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. Forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother name was Micah. So <clears throat> here we go again. They're talking about the mother. It's like, why do they keep telling us that this dude mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Absalom? Okay, so this is very important, apparently, to these people here, and I'm going to show you why. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as David his father, and he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. Now, I'm going to say this. When they talk a lot about so uh, sodomites, um, under the great mother, um, the actual, what you would consider what we call gatekeepers and sometimes two-spirited, um, they had an actual role to play. Um, she actually, if you look at the temples of Inanna and many of the temples, she gave the two-spirited individuals, which we would call today, you know, homosexual males or whatever you guys want to say today, she actually had a place in her temple. It's not, you know, accepted by the masculine energy, but the feminine energy, which today a lot of times you'll see women do that. You know, it's not uncommon. This has been going on for a very long time where the feminine energy will sometimes, you know, knows how to deal with. Now, it wasn't a thing where the, 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 the two-spirited individuals were trying to call themselves women. They were not trying to take the place of women. They had a respect for the divine feminine and they had a role to play and they respected it and protected the divine feminine. You see what I'm saying? But they never tried to consider themselves women. And that's a negative uh, type of toxic toxic aspect of two-spirited people. You see what I'm saying? So when you try to, you know, replace women, you know, that was an energy we never dealt with. And men had a mutual respect for the divine feminine. It wasn't any deemed toxic at all. It was reverenced and respect. It wasn't just women at the temples. A lot of men paid homage to this energy because it really did help men. It helped society. It helped the children. Okay. But you're going to see that there was a turn, you know, in events. So this man here, he decided to deal with, he had the Sodomites in the land. They had a particular area in which they were able to be in certain temples. They had a place. And that's what you should kind of do in a sense. There will always be two-spirited individuals, okay? And so you don't have to deal with it, but you should at least understand that it's there. And I think that they needed their own particular space too. And the divine feminine gave way to that. Okay. So that was a way of creating peace. Okay. Cause there was no confusion in, um, we knew everybody had their place. Um, okay. So he got rid of the sodomites and the idols and all of that. Okay. We're at verse 13 and it says, and also Micah, his mother. So here we go. We got Micah, his mother. Okay. So when they say that he did right by the Lord, meaning he gave over to the patriarchal system, okay? Because you'll see that there were people in the land that didn't, you know, that didn't deal with that. You see what I'm saying? They wanted to create unity, you know, to where the women had, you know, the god the goddess was there, the great mother was there. And also Micah, his mother, even her, he removed. So he kicked his mother out, okay, from being queen, okay? Because she had made an idol, in a grove okay so this is very important let's look up the word grove if you look it up in the hebrew um it is h when you see h okay that means hebrew the second half of the bible if it says g that is it's being translated into the greek so anything h so we have h a eight four two so h eight four two is the name esharah okay esharah okay means happy 
It also means Eshera or Astarte, a Phoenician goddess, also an image of the same grove, okay? So it comes from, it's going to tell you the word that it comes from, H833, which is Ashar, which means to be straight. It means to be leveled, right, happy. It means a guide, a relief. It means honest, forward. And it means to prosper. So this name was another name that meant like happy, just like the tribe of Israel. You know, you have, you know, Esher. Uh, what, what was the tribe? Uh, what was the Asher? <laughs> I couldn't remember how I called it Esher. Okay, because Esher did have her own tribe. She had her own cult. And, um, but yeah, as you can see, that whole grove part right there is what I wanted you to see. And I wanted you to see that the queen mother and how she had a role to play and how many of these kings, you know, they had respected the energy that was there. The great mother was there. But as you can see, an attack, an attack on those two energies together, the attack to take a uh, the great mother out of there because that energy they did not want there. They did not want the balance there. Okay. So we're going to go to, um, you know, if you notice anyway, when you're looking at the divine feminine, the people always had uh, a very positive response to dealing with her. You will hear the Israelites talk about, she's also typically called the queen of heaven. Um, and you'll hear them talk about how under her, how they have peace. Um, they would bake cakes and burn incense and things like that to the queen of heaven. If you notice when you read, you know, in the Old Testament about the God of Israel, he loved the smell of burnt flesh. There was sacrifice and uh, cutting of lambs and bulls and all of these type of things. So that you could see the different type of energy there. You know, it was more about conquer and slaughter because people don't like to dig into the Old Testament and see, you know, the basis, the true basis of what God is and what he was and, and what these people use God a biblical God to do, to rape, to take, to, you know, to steal, you know, from other land masses. Um, that's really what it was all about. Okay. That's what it was about. It was about stealing land masses and it was about using this God to do it. Okay. A group of people who wanted to become powerful by stealing land. It's never about God, boo. It's never about God. It's always about money. It's about stealing land and it's always about power when it comes to religious systems, okay? So it's never, God It's nothing without, he's only as big as the land he's able to steal, okay? So let's talk about here, you know, uh, Second Chronicles, we're gonna go, because remember, we're gonna go into the chronological order. So you guys, let me see here. This is, you know, this uh, computer screen be, be fucking my eyes up. Okay, so let me see. Um, Yeah, I'll be stopping and going because I had I should have brought my water over here. I don't want to go get it and come back. Okay, so I had to stop the video, go get my water. But, you know, if I stop, I'll just pick up back where I'm at. As long as, you know, y'all get what y'all need to get from this. You know, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Um, Second Chronicles 15. Um, verse. Uh, 16 through 17. So second Chronicles, you know, y'all, this is, oh, y'all done messed up. Hold on. Y'all bear with me because I ain't really know. Um, y'all don't have to be patient because um, it's hard for me to move this mouse right here. I don't know why. I think it's the app. Some of these apps be kind of janky. Maybe I need to update or something. I don't know. Okay. So we're going to go to Second Chronicles and see here. A second encounter. So you're going to see it's in Kings and it's also in Second Chronicles where the mother Micah, you know, is mentioned again as being removed as queen. And it also talks about the idol that she worshiped. You know what? I think, I 
Okay, I think I want to skip that one because it's kind of reiterating what I already said. So I think I want to skip 2 Chronicles and I think I want to go to 2 Kings, you guys. So I'm going to go to 2 Kings and 2 Kings, but you can read about it again in 2 Chronicles. A lot of Chronicles and Kings is kind of like repetitious. And so you'll see they'll end up saying the same things because Kings and Chronicles are kind of similar. So you'll see it. So if you want to see it again, um, a good reference to go to would be 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 15, verse 16 through 17. You can read it there as well, okay? So I want to go to 2 Kings um, chapter 21. Chapter 21, verse 3. Somebody going to get an attitude like, she's in the Bible. <laughs> They're going to be mad because they love to make videos off my videos, y'all. These people, <laughs> they love to be watching and see what women, you know, are up to. Okay. Okay. So 2 Kings, we'll start at chapter 21, verse 2. Look, let's just start at verse. We might as well just start at verse one. So he said, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And remember I told you guys, I said, look, these, these kids were young as heck, uh, becoming kings. And this was very common. And it's so silly. Instead of just allowing the woman to rule, you know, they would put these little boys in here, these little kids who, and people could be like, oh, they were mature. No, no, no. It wasn't about that. You know, a 12 year old is still a 12 year old. He can be as smart as he wanted to be, but he has had no life experiences to say that he can be king and that he can rule and um yeah let me get some water that he could rule and be you know over a nation um i'm sorry so that's why you'll see that they'll mention the mother anytime they mention the mother it's because the child the, the more than likely the king is a child okay okay so here we go, mentioning the mother again. This is this is a bootleg way of having a matriarch here, okay? Look, the mom's influence once again, okay? And the it says, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and five years in Jerusalem, okay? So he ruled for a nice amount of time. And his mother's name was Hezebah, okay? Okay, and he did, he did that which was evil, you guys, in the sight of the Lord, okay? And after the abominations, okay, of the heathen, who the Lord cast out before the children of Israel, okay? And so they'll call the heathens like the Canaanite nations and all these different nations that, but in actuality, the Israelites are the Canaanites. There is no difference between the Israelites and the Canaanites. These are the same people. And so these group of people who want to call themselves the Israelites, as a matter of fact, the name Israel has the name of El in it because the Canaanites pray to uh, Baal or El, okay? So a lot of the gods and the different names, the name Lord actually literally means Baal, okay? So a lot of the Israelite culture, it came out of Canaanites. So one group of Canaanites decide to break off and do something different. And all of a sudden, the ways of the people who were around you are considered evil, Okay, so now these people are evil. And what was the evil that they did? It was so evil to allow the great mother or the feminine energy to have a place. Okay, why? We're going to find out why. Why was it so bad to have the divine feminine anywhere near? Why was it so bad to have the image of ma masculine and feminine together? Because there's a power in that. And that is called order. OK, and when you don't want order, you want to create a disorder, a disharmony. You have to break that up. And one thing that you have to do is break up the spiritual system, because you got to understand this is not just an attack on feminine energy. This is also attack on the witches, the spiritual system, the women who were able to give insight, to give wisdom, 
to keep men on their toes, to be able to see things in a different light, okay? That's what women are able to do because we're able to go into the darkness and we're able to manifest in ways that men cannot because we have something magical called the womb. We have the intuition. We were here first, you know, and we will always be here. You know, uh, we created all the nations of people. This is valuable information that comes from the divine feminine. And when we are at our best, the nation thrives, okay? When we are at our best as women, the children are at their best. So this rebirth of the feminine energy is going to work in a lot of ways. But this energy also is destructive. And we're going to find out about that as well, okay? We're going to talk about that. Okay, so you see here, this is evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen who the Lord cast out before them, the children of Israel. For he built again the high places. <laughs> and in parenthesis, it says H, okay, okay, H853, the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal, okay, which was the male energy, and made a grove, okay? So we see that is a grove. Made a grove is called Esherah, okay, which means happy, which means prosperity, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them, okay? And he built altars in the house of the Lord. <laughs> I gotta say it like that. Which the Lord said in Jerusalem, okay, will I put my name? Okay, and he built altars for all the hosts of heaven and the two courts of the house of the Lord. <laughs> and he made his son pass through the fire. Let's talk about that. And observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He walked, he walked much wickedness in the sight of the Lord and provoked him to anger. So let's talk all about that right there because this is what is considered evil, right? Is to consult with wizards, dealing with enchantments, all the things, okay, when the feminine energy is embraced, give people power and give people abilities, okay? Didn't want people consulting or getting the answers that they needed. Didn't want people learning a higher spiritual source because this was a form of control to say that you can only get the spiritual source that you need from these one group of people, from this priesthood, from this bloodline. You got to go through our priest. You got to consult with our God instead of people having access to power themselves. It's putting people in spiritual boxes and telling people that using spiritual gifts or dealing with spiritual women or getting answers from spiritual people uh, that it is a sin and that it is wicked, okay? When balance is created, there are more spiritual gifts gifts passed out among the people, okay? At one point in time, when the feminine energy reigned on the earth, we didn't need cell phones because we were telepathic, okay? We could speak to each other in another way, okay? So we have this generic form of spirituality that has been brought to us by da -da -da -da, patriarchy, okay? And I hate to say it, I'm not being funny, but it is the truth. You know, technology is, you know, another form of witchcraft, okay? It's not an authentic, natural way of witchcraft, okay? So now we have technology and we don't have, you know, or more nature-centered ways. We're not depending upon nature anymore to heal us, okay? We're not depending upon what is around us like the stars, like the things in the sky. All of these things that are created to give us power now has to be stripped away from us, okay? to put us in boxes now and to set up systems called politics and all of these different things, you know, that makes us put us in the matrix. We have to. So these, all of these things begin to become wicked once we took out, you know, the feminine aspect. So let's talk about when they talk about passing through the fire, because you'll hear so many people take that out of context, context and say, well, these people were burning their children alive for child sacrifice, which is a total lie. OK, one thing you need to know is that everybody had their own way of burying the dead.
And one thing that I hate is that people who believe in the Bible or the Israelite so-called way um, are very narrow-minded. You see what I'm saying? When you deal with a narcissistic God that wants you to believe that he is the all and everything else in existence is beyond, is below or beneath him and he is the only God to be reverenced, when you deal with that type of energy right there, what you do is you begin to be narrow-minded and you don't respect other paths, other paths that may be even greater than your own, but you're putting yourself in a box when you look at the Bible from a religious standpoint, okay? So... The Israelites believed in being buried in the ground. You know, the ancient Egyptians, they had their way. They would mummify bodies. They had their way of doing it. There's nothing wrong with that. Who are we to say that that was the wrong way to deal with their dead? Well, for them, they would erect these large statues. Um, and what they would do is, in honor of Baal, a lot of times they would lose children. Uh, losing babies was something that was so common, okay? Today, you'll have crematoriums where you'll go and you'll cremate your dead. But what they would do is they would place the babies like in the arms of a statue that looked similar to Baal and they would wheel the baby in. The baby was already deceased, okay? They would wheel the baby in and kind of like giving the baby to their God. It, it might have been a way of giving people comfort, but it was a way of cremating their dead. It was kind of like a way of turning it into ashes. It wasn't about, uh, but see, that was considered to be unholy to the Israelites that they believe in being put into the ground, being buried. You know, even to this day, a lot of Jewish people or people who I don't, that's not the Jews, but they will still not do the autopsies and all because, like I said, the Jew, the Jews were African people. Okay, so I don't, I don't know what's going on today with people. History has really been twisted around, but I'm saying that the uh, ancient Canaanites were African people. Okay, so <clears throat> back to this. I had to make that known. But, you know, they would oftentimes pass them through fire like that. Now, that was considered, you know, wicked to a group of people that had their own way now of doing things. Okay. So, wanted to show you there that women were being kicked out of having positions of power because people coming in and trying to teach a new way and show people a new way and introduce them to a new God. Not because, you know, divine intervention, but because it is time to conquer lands. Um, we're trying to create a powerful system and a powerful system has to be created, you know, according to them by blood, by war. Okay, so we'll see here in Jeremiah 17 and 2. And we'll see here, because, you know, Jeremiah was a so-called prophet, you know, basically going around annoying people and trying to get people to basically um, convert over to dealing with Yahweh or what is called Yahwism, okay? Introducing people to this way. Uh, basically, he was the ancient Karen at the time, going around harassing people, saying, look at you over there. You got an altar, uh, you know, to Eshra, and, you know, Yahweh is the one and only God. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, it's a spirit behind that because <laughs> even the modern day uh, Hebrew Israelites that you be seeing on the corner, they are some of the most annoying people ever. You know, it's, they have been really cursed with the spirit of annoyance. You know, they don't do nothing else. They annoy the hell out of the neighborhood. Okay. So <laughs> people see them coming and be like, oh Lord, here comes the annoying, you know, and that's kind of that same energy, forcing people to believe in something. If your God is so great, you shouldn't have to try to force it on people. People should be able to see that for themselves but when given an opportunity, they gravitate to other things. We can't respect differences, you know, we just can't. Okay, so here we go. We got Jeremiah here, uh, 17 and 2. I don't know if I'm going to start at, at 17. Let me see. Yeah. I mean, at, okay. Okay. Let's see, y'all. Uh, 
Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start at 1. Yeah, might as well start at 1. Okay. Oh, okay. So no, this is not... Jeremiah 7 is where we talk about the Queen of Heaven. We're going to start right here. And it says here, we're going to see our, our mother again here. And we're going to see how she was taken down once again. So we're looking at the fall. This is part of the fall that we're looking at. And this is a good history indicator showing you firsthand how back then, how the feminine energy and principle was taken out. Okay. It says the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. This is Jeremiah 17, 1. And with the point of diamond, it is graven upon the table of their heart, upon the horns of your altars. And it says, verse 2, while, the, while their children remember their altars, okay, so they have their own altars, and their groves, there again, we have that word groves, that is Asherah, those are like um, basically areas that were dedicated, you know, like the Asherah tree, they were like areas in nature uh, that they dedicated to the great mother. And it says, by their groves and by the green trees upon the high hills, showing you that she was celebrated outside and typically in nature near trees because she was that. That's why there's not a respect for the earth anymore, because by default, by kicking out the mother principle, we really did kick out that uh, compassion for the earth that we live in. Um, the respect for nature is not there anymore. You see what I'm saying? And it has had an effect on us, especially us indigenous people and us melanated people who we thrived upon herbs and we thrived upon nature and order, okay? Because a nation cannot thrive when the women are not appreciated. And when the women are not appreciated by default, the children are not as well. So there's, if you notice, people don't celebrate children like they used to. Uh, children, we would, I was just talking about this today with someone were more of an asset because they had things that they could do. You know, children could harvest, they could do. There was more of a respect there. Now we have genetically modified food. You know, we're not growing and planting things. Children are more of a liability. You know, they cost more than what they bring it in because they're not doing anything. I'm just being honest with you because at some point in time, children learned how to do things that were around them outside of just technology or on a computer. Is technology really helping us or not? It is leading us to our demise. For every gift, you know, it is also a curse as well. And you're going to understand that, that gifts are two-way. You know, it's a gift and it's also a curse in a lot of ways as well. And so technology is doing us the same way. Um, and it's saying that their children remembered their altar. So this is saying that their children... So this is something that's very interesting is that the children were trying to go back to a way that existed before, you know, this new way under this new God, this new way of monotheism instead of polytheism. So the children still had altars. They were going back. It was the parents that were more so probably being converted at that time because it's saying that the children, they were the ones with the altars and remembering their ways. And, um, so let me see if I want to keep reading here. So you see how it made the God, the so-called God of Israel, so angry to see this feminine energy there and existing, you know, it made him so angry. And it, it's so interesting because I'm, I know most of you don't even know that Esherah's name appeared so many times in the Bible. It's in there about 40, 60. I can't go through all of it. I'm not going to go through every single place where there is, you know, her name. But there was this constant battle to fight against the queen of heaven. Why? Because she existed before this new God and there was a jealousy there, jealousy of what she gave to the people, you know. Um, so let's go to, uh, we're going to still stay in Jeremiah, but let's go before, we're going to go to uh, Jeremiah 7 instead of 17. Um, I kind of had mixed that up. I wanted to do this one first, but however, I hope you guys are able to enjoy this and, um, you know, follow along here. So we have Jeremiah 7 and 
going to go to verse, Jeremiah said, we're going to go to verse 18. And I'm going to show you. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're going to talk. This is Jeremiah, and this is his book here. We're going to start at verse 17, because I can't go through this whole thing, y'all. I'll be too much. Okay. So it says, y'all can read the whole thing, though, to get better understanding. I do suggest that you do that. But, you know, look at it from a different standpoint, okay? Was what they doing really evil? Evil to who and evil why? Okay. So here we go is Jeremiah 7 and 17. See thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. So this is what they're doing, y'all. The children gather woods and the fi father kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. See what I'm saying? This is the queen of heaven. They're talking about Esherah and pour out drink offerings unto their gods that they may provoke me to anger. See, he's angry about this. These people are having a good time. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon, upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall be quenched, okay? Now he is so mad, you see what I'm saying? So then this is what he says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, pour your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them this day, that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices, because this God is a really bloody God. If you read all throughout the Bible, and if you just read about sacrifices, you'll see that the God of Israel loved burnt flesh, burned animals. Um, if you notice when it came to the queen of heaven, these people were burning incense. These people were baking cakes out in the woods somewhere, enjoying nature. And this angered God because I guess the attention was not on him some kind of way. He wanted these people to totally, and this is really something that you should think about. What was wrong with that? What was wrong with these people being so close to nature? You see what I'm saying? There's something really wrong with people, you know, who have a problem with nature. You know, the very thing that keeps us all alive, you know, nature, you know, you're not in tune. Something is seriously wrong with that. So we saw earlier how people back then were able to consult with the stars. They were more spiritually involved, which all these things are forbidden. These are forbidden when dealing with the God of Israel. You know, he does not want you consulting with anything, dealing with your ancestors, paying reverence or respect. That's your protection. That is your wisdom. That is your guidance. That is understanding yourself. This energy here does not want you to breathe. You see what I'm saying? Because it's about being suppressed, dominated, and in a submissive, uh, in a submissive way. You know, and that's how we end up being here in society when it comes to the government. This, all of this religious stuff made way for this corporation called America. It really did. You know, it really does mimic, you know, the actual uh, government that we're under. When you really do think about it, I'm going to do a video really breaking that down soon about how biblical God is very similar and in, in the structure of, you know, of the Bible and the angels and the her you know the hierarchy, you know of biblical God, how it's very similar to what we're in today, you know. So this was really preparing us for our demise. This was us going down spiritually, from us having more influence on ourselves, 
and what was around us to us now declining down to this force. And our great mother had to be literally kicked out of heaven. Remember I was talking about in the Lilith video, how being kicked out of heaven was not Lucifer, a male, but it was Lilith, the dark mother, the darker aspects of her and the great mother who was being kicked out of heaven, you know? Um, so let's talk about that as well. Okay, so then let's go to Isaiah 17. So we're almost finished with looking. So we're going in history and just showing you how this angered a group of people when it says, and God was angry, and he said that this place will be burned to the ground, this didn't mean that God created thunder, okay, and burned a place to the ground. This is saying that a group of men, notice 95% of the time when biblical God wanted to do something, he used mere men to do it. Because like I told you before, these are people who are picking a God similar to what they already are, which is warlike barbaric and narcissistic, okay? So they went into nations and took land masses that did not belong to them. There were people living there, having a spiritual system that created balance and this angered them. Why was they so angry? Well, it's jealousy. It's jealousy. It's being jealous of harmony, the divine feminine. It's being very jealous of what she had to offer and give the people, okay? And they wanted that land mass. They wanted those people gone. The first thing you have to do is, anytime people want to take landmass, first thing that they do is try to nicely get the people to convert. We know this was done all over the world by who? The white man. You know, they did this with the native, try to nicely get the people to convert. When the people don't want to convert over, then it starts to get bloody. Now we do it forcibly, you know, and that's what ended up happening to these people. And when God said, and I'm going to burn it to the ground, no, that wasn't no thunder hitting the ground most of the time. This was God sending in men and armies to take land masses to kill the men and to take the women who have not laid with men, virgin girls, young girls, taking them. This is all happening in the Bible, okay? And we're going to learn about Jezebel and why she was so important because she fought against the patriarchal system. Jezebel was no joke, okay? And I much love and respect to Queen Jezebel. Look, she get the water. <laughs> Basically, when we read, all they was doing was pouring, you know, baking cakes, pouring out, you know, because we do that today when we say we pouring out a little liquor to the homies. This is something that has been very, you know, old and people been doing it for a very long time, pouring out drinks and different things like that. So he was mad about that. I'm like, well, doing nothing wrong. What's wrong with you, biblical God? Shoot. There's something wrong with your ass. Okay, so so then we're going to go to Isaiah. This is another one of them Karen-ass prophets going around trying to convert people to things they didn't want to do, causing war and chaos when you just let people live how they want to live. Uh, they weren't bothering you baking cakes, okay? I don't understand it. Um, 17, we got, we got, okay, so this is Isaiah 17, seventeen and Seventeen and eight. Okay, so here we go. We'll see it's mentioned again, the groves. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, y'all. Uh, Isaiah 17. I hate moving this mouse like this. This gonna make me bust out my actual Bible. Okay. And it got dust on it. I don't, you know, I don't really mess with that no more. I just be online. Um, okay, so we got 17 and 8. Okay, so here we go. And it says... It says, at that day shall a man look to his maker and I shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. Okay, that was seven, 17 and eight. And he shall not look to the altars 
the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. So there we see again, the groves are the ear. And so this is God in visualizing a day where Asherah, the queen of, of the mother image, no longer exists. You know, this was something that was planned for a very long time. This just did not happen that, you know, the mother was taken out of her place. This was something that occurred and was going on throughout history. This is just one side, you know, of history. The great mother's statues and images have been being knocked down all throughout society for a very, very long time. Um to suppress this type of energy, okay? So I wanted to show you what, in essence, ended up happening to the mother figure. This happened all over Africa. This is not, and all, and all over these nations, the Middle East, all over, where the goddess image was basically done with. Um, and they did this, like I said, as a means to take over land masses. So that is what happened to our great mother. You have to understand that what is going on on earth is also going on in the heavens as above, so below. I always say this on earth as it is in heaven. So when the queen of heaven was kicked out of heaven, this is something that is even felt on the earth. Like we're going through that today where there is a level of respect that is lost when it comes to dealing with, with women all over the world. You know that. Um, there is... Um, a way of saying when we're dealing with patriarchy that women are beneath them and this by us doing this has created a discord um, we have lost our voice of reason so this is where the great mother has went she's been kicked out uh, she's no longer able to establish a matriarchal system um, it has been crushed you know for a very long time Women had to work very, very hard to get to positions of power. And one thing that ends up happening is that when you suppress an energy, when this energy finally does, you know, take hold and take shape, what ends up happening is that the energy ends up being even more powerful than what it was before. So by suppressing this energy, by putting our mother in a perpetual sleep, and by us declining spiritually, when this energy does return as it is returning right now and as it has returned, it is going to be even more powerful than what it was before. Men should really embrace this energy because it's going to create more opportunities for them. You're going to find that people are going to become even more spiritual, but something first must happen that many of us don't want to happen, but it must happen in order for this energy uh, to be embraced. I don't know, I feel the light. Anyway, and for this energy to be embraced. So what we have to understand is we have to get the different aspects of the great mother. And there's two ways to look at the aspects of the great mother. First, we have the physical aspects. And many times we'll describe this as the maiden. We'll call it the mother and the crone. And it also kind of go, go with the seasons in nature, okay? And I call that the physical aspects because it's kind of like the aging process of a woman. So we have the maiden-like energy because you have to understand that your three-in-one that we all talk about, you know, the, the three-in-one that they stole from us because patriarchy stole a lot from the matriarchal system. You had to create a system out of something that already existed. We already had a system way before them. So what happens is they stole a lot of our concepts. They stole the triple three, the triple goddess. They stole that concept that was existing all over the world, okay? They stole that and came up with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which absolutely makes no sense whatsoever, okay? So the triple goddess was the three aspects of the woman. When we talk about the maiden, the mother, and crone, we're talking about the physical aspects of the, of the woman. So the maiden is more of the younger energy and we can we can kind of connect it to the seasons in which we are, you know, we're in in the world because women have a very strong connection to nature, very strong connection to the earth. And all of our children that we have taught, 
you know, which are our sons that we created, they have that strong connection. That spiritual sense that a lot of our men have, the divine masculine, have been taught to them by the feminine, okay? Because it's a known fact that when you look at ancient Egypt, many of the pharaohs had to be taught to be pharaohs. They had to be, you know, blessed. They had to be increased by the divine feminine, by the mothers, by the spiritual system of the mothers. And many indigenous cultures were very matriarchal. You was who your mother was. We definitely knew who your mother was. It's a guess who your father is. Wasn't no DNA test back then. We don't know who your daddy is. You have to take the word of this woman over here, okay? We don't know, but we definitely know who your mother is. So by default, that makes sense, okay? To be of the tribe of your mother, okay? And so that was a system that was very respected and also the very essence of women was respected. So the maiden is more so the young woman. This is a woman who has started her cycle. She hasn't had children. And many of us reach these phases at different times. So I'm giving you a time frame, but really we mature at different levels. You see what I'm saying? Um, but the maiden is what we would call the spring chicken, okay? She doesn't know a lot about life. She's being taught, okay? She doesn't know that's when we're in our 20s. Many of us become mothers early, but that doesn't mean that we're ready for it mentally, you know, but she's learning her way, okay? And then you have what is called the summer when you're more so a mother, okay? So you tend to have children anywhere between your spring, if you're an early bloomer, you know, you, get, you did it early, and somewhere in between the summer. And in your summertime, we call that the mother energy. Now, the maiden is more so, would be considered like the lustful energy, um, she's also, most times, she's like put into the same category as more Oshun energy. When you're into your looks, when you're into a lot of beautiful things, when you're discovering what it really means to be a woman, uh, we call that more Oshun energy, okay? Or in the other pantheons, we would call that more Inanna energy when you're very more so sexual, okay? A lot of lust energy is there at those ages because you're developing, you develop boobs, you're smelling yourself as they call it, the old folks. You know what I'm saying? Which this is just natural things you're evolving as a woman you're blooming okay so this is the perfect time to be around a lot of women that are older so you can learn many things then you come into what is like your summer when you become a mother during the mother phase is when you, you you might get married and then decide to have a baby you know you're learning how to embrace creativity you're learning to embrace you know making a baby <laughs> And being a mother, you're learning to embrace all of these different things. There's a lot of wisdom that come with being a mother. You know, it's a lot of wisdom that come with motherhood. Um, you're breastfeeding. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> it's a lot of things you're learning in that summer phase. You know what I mean? It's a lot of things that you're also able, able to teach in that summer. The summer and fall is kind of around the same thing. You're still in that mother bracket. When you get to the fall, most times many of our children are grown or about to be grown, but we're still mothers. You see what I'm saying? Some of our children become young adults and we're still kind of in that mother phase, okay? Somewhere in between your fall and your summer and your in your uh, winter, you become a grandparent, great grandparent. Going into the winter is called the chrome. This is big mama. This is the, the, the key wisdom. This is when your spiritual gifts really start to evolve as a woman as you begin to be older. You know, you have this, uh, I'm the mother, the matriarch of the family. Uh, older women tend to live a very long time. You don't have that physical agility, but what you do have is you do have a lot of that wisdom that you can pass down. Uh, you begin to be able to just curse people with your tongue because those spiritual gifts are so powerful for the crone. The crone is like the ultimate. You want to get there. And we call that the winter. You see what I'm saying? So those are the three phases in the physical realm because us as women, we go through that in this realm, you know, during the winter months, it's also when you start to go through what they call menopause. You know, you don't have that cycle anymore. You don't have to worry about that side of life. You begin to be really strong. And for each of us as women, we'll all go through those phases at different times of our lives. Um, we all are not, you know, so don't worry about the age bracket thing, you know, move at your own time. Okay. So, but in the spiritual realm, when we're looking at the three aspects of the woman, we're looking at the what we call 
the uh, beauty and love goddess, which I was saying was like Inanna. And then we have what we would call um, the mother. It's always called the mother, the mother energy. And then that would be like Eshera. That would be like Yim and Yah energy in the Yorba culture. That would be like, you know, th the mother type of energy that's there. And then we have what is called the war goddess. And this is in the spirit realm. So like I said, as above, so below. These are the different aspects of a woman. This has a lot to do with our personality. All women, you know, and we all have those kind of energies. You have the war goddess, which would be more like Oya energy, which is what I deal with. More so the Yansa energy, uh, Kali energy. That would be Anat, you know, Neith. Those will be all of your like war goddess type of energies or what we would call our dark mothers like Lilith. Though that would be more like war, like dark mother energy there. And that is another aspect. And all women tend to have those. And we have those all throughout our lives where we're more seductive. You know, each woman is like that. We have that motherly thing where we're taking care of our family. We're taking care of our children. We're taking care of ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves, lady, okay, ladies, okay? You got to be a mother to yourself. And we have that energy where we're willing to go to war. We're willing to stand up for what we believe in. We're willing to mess with one of our children and see what we'll do to you. Okay? So we begin to have that type of energy. And that is another aspect of the great mother. And so depending on how she is treated is what you will get. You know, that's how this works when you're dealing with the divine feminine. Okay, so if you notice before it was cakes and incense, you know, that's all she required was the cakes and incense. You see what I'm saying? And that was not good, good enough. Under cakes and incense, her children were murdered. Her temples were knocked to the ground. The earth has been destroyed. Our great mother was put to sleep. Her children were put in bondage. And when I say children, I mean her daughters, the witches, were under attack, spiritual gifts have been severed, uh, a royal uh, priest lines have been broken, ancient traditions have been ruined, our people have never been the same. You know, we have steady been at war, war with each other, war with other nations, nothing but bloody, bloody, bloody war. Um, and so now it is not the time for the motherly instinct. Her children are now in bondage. So now we are gonna get the war goddess. Now we're going to get the dark mother because you did not accept her. You did not love her when it was about cakes and incense and, and pouring out your drink on the ground and going out in nature and creating. This is not the environment that we're in. Now that the great mother is awakening, it is, a, it is time to go to war. It is time to destroy a system. It is time to supplant something. It is time to take down. There could be no peace until we tear down this system that is in place. And that is what the great mother is going to do. And she is going to do that primarily through natural disasters, through, through all throughout. That's how we know that is the hand of God, because the hand of God is not getting a bunch of men to go and take down nations and kill people. It is when nature itself begins to turn on the world and, and, and certain people in the world. Um, because you, you're going to see soon that nature is going to turn on many of us because of how we treated the earth and how we have treated the children of the earth. So we're going to get the dark goddess this time. That's why during the return of the great mother now, you see so much rebellious feminine energy. You cannot slut shame women no more. You cannot put us in a box anymore and tell us what we can and can't do no more. It's like nobody want to hear. What no, we're making moves on massive scales. And this is making a lot of men uncomfortable. But you're not going to get that loving energy. Where would that get us right now during a time where we have a foot on our neck? You know, where will love and comforting and all of these things, see, that is not what's going to happen in a world like today. This is a time for rebellion. This is a time for people to now stand up for themselves. This is not, this is a time for empires to be destroyed. So this is what you're going to get from the mother now. Since she dogged out her daughters, since she wouldn't accept the cakes and the incense, that wasn't good enough. Now we're going to show you. And now with the power of the great mother is going to show you uh, her power on in the darker aspects now. 
Now we're going to have to respect the dark side of the great mother. You see what I'm saying? And now that she's returning, you're going to see it in a physical realm. You're going to see women taking more positions of power, even in a music industry. Even if you consider it in a negative aspect, positive, it's going to manifest in ways that you can't believe. On a brighter note, this dark energy is going to empower her children. If you are a person of a certain vibration, if you are riding the wave of the energy, you have nothing to worry about because this will benefit you, whether male, female, whatever. This energy is needed now because the earth is fair. We have the divine masculine where there was more yang energy, as we would call it, and it was blood, war, all type of stuff. We're going to get more of that. But it's more so when we think about the energy of Oya, how she subplants, how she gets rid of certain energy and replace it with other energy. She's not destroying, but she's moving things around. And that's what have to be done. That's what have to. We're calling on the darker aspects of the great mother to awaken. And when she does, the gates of hell will open. <laughs> And more power will be given to her children, the melanated children of the earth, okay? Because we're in bondage when the matriarch is in bondage. We're in bondage, the melanated people. So as she began to awaken, it's going to be an uncomfortable feeling. These people didn't want this energy, as we would like to call it, the Cali energy, to enter the earth because it destroys empires, it's the destructive aspect. It's not cooperative. It's not going to, okay, and I'm going to be submissive and be quiet. Enough of that. You know, you can only be quiet for so long. How long do we be quiet while we sit around and go through the things that we're going through as women, while our children are being murdered? While, how long do you be quiet? So now it's a time, and I'm not, and I'm not meaning protesting, now it's a time for things to be destroyed. This earth is headed for all kinds of disasters. I mean, it has to happen. You have to understand nothing is forever. You see what I'm saying? Nothing is forever. The great mother is returning with a vengeance. You know, they try to say that about, you know, biblical God is returning. Jesus coming back, cracking the sky. We're not talking about this whole idea. We're talking about an energy that is going to change things in the very world. And this has happened all the time. As the seasons change, so does this earth have to change. And things have to be destroyed. Things must die for other things to be reborn. And then when things are reborn and back in its rightful place, then we can have that nurturing aspect of our great mother, the nurturing side. But in a fucked up place like this, we don't have time for that. And that's not what we're getting now. Okay? But that's why you're going to have more and more women, you know, there is judgment that needs to be done. That's why there's always an attack on witches, because part of what we do is we create the judgment. We create the judgment on this earth. We condemn nations. We create the natural disasters. And believe me, when the gates of hell are opened, it will be witches who will open up that. We're going to talk about the gates of hell and how it is important. We even want to talk about the demons and understand what they really are and why they don't want you dealing with them. Because you're going to understand that instituting these patriarchal gods took away our power in more than one level. So this gets deeper and deeper and deeper as we go more and more and more into it. Okay, you guys? So... This is just, I mean, this video is kind of long. It's its not, it's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but I hope it's giving you an idea on what exactly happened, you know, to our great mother. Where she ended up going, how, how this ended up happening. We need to get a clearer understanding of all of this. Um... You know, and it's a lot more to it. We're going to get into other aspects as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I tried to shorten it down as much as I can. Um, there are some things that I have I was not able to touch on. Maybe we'll do a part two because there's definitely some other aspects of history that we can go into and show how the mother, the great mother, was taken down in society. And while now this energy is returning, okay? 
Um, I, I want to thank you guys for watching this. Um, I need you guys to like, share, and subscribe as always. And also, you guys, make sure you support Crystal Creek Botanicals. Um, that's my store for all your spiritual supply needs, you guys. I thank you for your support. I thank you for all of your uh, encouraging words, your positive reviews. I thank you guys just for everything. Um, I thank you guys for just supporting the channel. And there's more to come. I'm going to be doing more videos, you guys. And I just thank you all. And I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. And my hearts are going out to all of you in Texas and different places all over the world experiencing a very harsh winter. Okay, you guys? So guys, keep manifesting and take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>